Hello there! This in-depth review is sponsored by Skillshare. It's a great learning community with over 25,000 different classes. And if you want a two-month free trial, check out the link in the description. This here is the AudioFuse 8 Pre from Arturia, and in today's video we are taking a look at all of this. So I bought the original AudioFuse just when it launched, and people were rightfully skeptical about Arturia's first ventures into the audio interface market. But beside the fact that they used a crappy micro USB connection on the back of the AudioFuse, I've been super happy with the interface and its performance. So when Arturia reached out and asked if I wanted to check out their 8 Pre, I of course said yes. I mean, this is a very interesting unit with a few unique features. And I thought it'd be interesting to see if it lives up to my pretty high expectations of their audio interfaces. On the front panel you have two XLR inputs, as well as control over the audio volume for the eight inputs. For each of the input channels you have control over 48 volts phantom power, you have a pad, you also have a face button. You also have a lot of settings right on the front, for example settings for sample rate, as well as whether it's going over USB or ADAT. You have two headphones output, but only one volume control. Channels 1 and 2 is slightly different, and if we have a look here on the back, you can see that you not only have the inputs for channel 1 and 2, but you also have insert, send and return. This means that you can connect, for example, an external vocal processor directly into the audio fuse. This is a quite unique feature that isn't normally on an audio interface. Now if you need it or not, that's something you have to figure out for yourself. On the back we have connections for ADAT as well as word clock and a USB connection, no more micro USB, as well as 8 individual outputs plus a stereo output for monitors. And here's a minor thing but it shows the quality of this product. The power connector actually locks on to the back of the unit using this little ring here. And it comes with two USB cables, USB-C to USB-C and USB-C to whatever the normal one is called. One well-designed feature of the 8 Pre is that the rack gears that are supplied with the unit can either be used to rack mount the unit or angle downwards and function as a stand for the audio interface. And here you can see me happily mounting the feet in the totally wrong way. You're supposed to be this way, facing inwards. But when I reattached the stands the right way, I noticed something. The holes wouldn't align with the holes on the unit. I couldn't screw them onto the unit. I thought, is this the time that I can finally bash Arturia products for something? And then I talked to a friend who has an AudioFuse 8 Pre and he told me that, you know, the leg with the Arturia logo ingrained on it is supposed to go on the left side. So it's actually a testament to really good engineering that there's actually a left foot and a right foot. And when I attached them the right way, they fit perfectly. In order to test the new AudioFuse 8 Pre, I took the Drum Brute Impact, which has quite a lot of dynamic range to its drum sounds, and recorded four individual mono tracks into Cubase. And for comparison, I repeated the process with the Focusrite Claret 8 Pre, which I think is sort of a competitor. I also recorded voiceover with both of the audio interfaces. Keep in mind that in order for you to have a pleasant experience, I've boosted some of the vocal audio, but if you want to check out the raw material, I'll leave a link in the description. When I recorded the drum brute, I was using the exact same settings on the drum brute, and I tried my very best to match the input signal.
to my ears, there's very little difference between the Arturi 8 Pre and the Focusrite 8 Pre, which isn't really surprising because both are very nice audio interfaces. So next up we're doing a bit of a microphone preamp test. Now this test is by no means very scientific. I have this Rode mic hooked up to input number one, the gain is set to max, and this is basically what it sounds like. Now if you hear a faint whooshing or in the background, that is my computer. The fans of the computers is getting picked up by this mic, but I don't really have a more quiet space in my house. You can also hear some birds in the background, possibly. So this is the totally untreated audio from this Rode mic into the 8 Pre. Now, what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna boost the signal because the pad on this particular audio interface has a nifty function. You can long press it and then you get a signal boost. So we're gonna do that. So now what you're hearing is the boosted audio from the 8 Pre and the first uh, input. And I have the, the mic pretty close to my mouth, so you should be able to pick up a little bit more of the transients and stuff from my voice. So my name is Bo, welcome to Bo Beats, and yeah, this is what the mic pre sort of sounds like in a less than ideal room situation. So I hope that gives you an idea. Now I'm going to be quiet for a little while and you can listen to what the room sounds like because basically that's what you're hearing, you're hearing what the room sounds like. Now I'm going to turn off the pad and still be quiet. Let silence commence. I hope my audio test conveys that the mic pre's are very silent and sound really good. With the pad, you can actually boost the signal quite a bit too, which can be useful for mics like the SM7B or this Procaster from Rode. So here's a microphone preamp test with the Claret 8 Pre, and uh, we have the same conditions, a noisy room, a computer in the background, we even have a little fan here on my light that you might be able to pick up. Do note, however, that the signal well, while the preamp is maxed out, the signal is much lower. I can see it from here inside my recording software. The signal is much lower than on the AudioFuse 8 Pre, even without the boosted signal. With the boosted signal, it's like through the roof in terms of in terms of uh, strength of the, the audio volume. However, with the Clarity 8 Pre, you simply don't get as much juice, it seems, at least for for powering up one of these mics that doesn't need phantom power, but still requires a, a lot of juice from, uh, from a mic preamp. So that's probably good to know. I'll probably have to boost the signal in post somehow. I'll probably be normalizing it or something. It's very hard for me to judge the quality of these mic preamps. I leave that up to you if you want to download the files and check it out for yourself and give your verdict in the comment section. However, there's a clear factual advantage of the AudioFuse 8 Pre, and that is simply that you get a lot more gain out of your mic preamp. So if that's something that's important, well, then you know. Latency-wise, the Arturia 8 Pre performs well. On 128 samples, it has an input latency of 6.2 and an output latency of 4.9. As you can see here, the Clarity 8 Pre does outperform the audio fuse latency-wise, but that's not really surprising considering that the Clarity 8 Pre is a Thunderbolt interface. It should be a little bit, you know, a little bit quicker than the USB-C of AudioFuse 8 Pre. Another pretty substantial difference between these two audio interfaces is that the Claret 8 Pre has eight physical inputs, whereas the AudioFuse actually has 10. The two inputs on the front of the 8 Pre are actually two additional inputs for channel one and two, and if you use them, they cancel out whatever you have connected on the back. So it's for quickly recording a microphone or maybe an instrument. An advantage of the Claret 8 Pre, however, is the dual headphone outputs and individual volume controls that you have on the front of the unit. With the Arturia 8 Pre, you also have dual ADAT inputs and outputs. This still only gives you eight additional channels. However, you can use the pair of them for higher resolution recordings. 
Apparently, and I didn't know this, there are bandwidth limits to Lightpipe ADAT, so if you want to run 8 tracks over ADAT, you're restricted to 44.1 and 48kHz, and if you want to run high resolution 96kHz, you actually need the two inputs and outputs of the Audio Fuse 8 Pre. Oh, and a small thing that I forgot, and I'm Bo, by the way, the narrator, if you don't know who I am. So another cool feature of the Audio Fuse 8 Pre is that you can actually use it as an ADAT expansion. So it's an audio interface. You can use it with a computer to record audio, but you can also use it as an ADAT expansion for another audio interface. So I could take my Claret 8 Pre, use that as the audio interface, and connect the 8 Pre from Arturia as an expansion. This is actually an interesting functionality that we don't see that much on audio interfaces, that they're both like sort of ADAT expansions and audio interfaces. I just thought I'd let you know. Now, let's get back to the other stuff. While the Audio Fuse 8 Pre has a ton of hands-on control, you also have this control center. It's nicely designed and easy to understand, and here you can, for example, set up different mixes. So you could have a Q mix that you listen to, say, on your headphones, and another monitor mix going out through a pair of speakers or monitors. And another nifty feature is that you actually have two additional channels that you can record on. These are loopback channels that you can use to record the audio from the computer. So say you want to record audio from one program directly into your DAW, for example, then you would use the loopback channels. And here's just an observation. I recently got these Neumann headphones and I've been testing it out on different systems and since when I plugged them into the Audiofuse 8 Pre, I really started to notice how good they are. I think it's because the headphone amplifier on the Audiofuse 8 Pre is just driving them really well. Just a little observation, but it did surprise me how much the headphones preamp did matter. So who is the 8 Pre for? And what about that quick guide to picking your audio interface? Well, I will talk all about that after this word here from my sponsor. So Skillshare is an online learning community with over 25,000 different classes. I've promoted stuff like uh, their coffee brewing classes before, but today I want to promote this class here by Young Guru, an excellent mix engineer and producer. He has a couple of really well produced courses that go over stuff like mixing and recording from a home studio environment without needing a ton of equipment. So I definitely recommend them. You should check them out. An annual subscription is less than $10 a month and it gets you unlimited access to all of Skillshare's classes and if you use my link in the description, you get a two month free trial. So go and check out Skillshare, it's a cool service and you can find pretty much whatever course you want on there. So check it out. So who is the Arturi AudioFuse 8 Pre for actually? Well, it's for anyone planning to run an 8 to 16 channel setup. I mean, obviously, if you only need two channels, it's not for you, even though it looks cool. This could be a synth setup, but it's even better suited for a home or professional recording studio where you record live drums, bass guitar, vocals, etc. Because it really takes advantage of all the feature that this audio interface has. I could also see this being useful in a podcasting environment where you would be setting up multiple microphones, taking advantage of all of those mic preamps, but you could also be recording system audio simultaneously using that loopback function so you could implement clips of audio or video into your show. However, it's not for somebody who doesn't need all of those good mic preamps, because if line level audio is all you need, it's not an ideal interface, because you will be paying a lot for features you won't use. And lastly, if you want DSP power on the audio interface itself, it is definitely not the card for you because it doesn't have that, so keep that in mind. So Bo, you seem pretty positive. Are there any drawbacks? Well, on the original audio fuse, you could switch whether you monitor the inputs or just system audio or set the balance in between, and this was very handy and I actually missed it on the 8 Pre. But other than that, it's hard to find any flaws with this audio interface, big or small. It's priced competitively, it's very well built, the mic pre's sound great, line audio sounds great too, and it does impress with its feature set and analog inserts and dual ADAT. So if you need all of this, it's a great buy. Um, if you don't need all of this, you're spending a lot of money on an audio interface that you might not utilize fully.
So here's the Bowbeats quick guide to buying an audio interface. First question you have to ask yourself is how many inputs do you really need realistically? My advice is generally to go big, at least two more inputs than you think you need because it does suck quite a lot to having to buy a new audio interface. Secondly, how many mic inputs do you realistically need? This is where the eight pre units, both the Claret and the Focusrite differ since they offer multiple mic inputs. And if you plan on recording, say drums, you will need that many inputs. But for a singer songwriter, maybe two mic preamps are usually fine. And for a synth setup, you can go as low as one mic preamp. That could be plenty enough. Number three, expandability. A that is great because it sucks to have to buy another audio interface down the road and it's often less expensive to buy an ADAT expansion. There are inexpensive expansions around. I for example have the Behringer ADA 8200 which works fine. So expandability is great. ADAT, awesome. Number four convenience and how important that is to you. So look at an audio interface and see what kind of hands of control does it really offer. This is often overlooked. A rack interface like the 8 Pre's doesn't offer nearly as much convenient control as a desktop audio interface like the original AudioFuse or the upcoming AudioFuse Studio. I can't tell you how much it helps having really quick access to mute, headphones control, monitor levels, and having that at arm's length. For anybody doing serious amount of work, this quickly becomes a big selling point, and it has been very important to me. Number five, have you considered a USB mixer with multi-tracking capability? Because for some people this is a better solution. So you could check out the Persona Studio Live series and the Soundcraft Signature MTK, for example. I've heard good things about both series. Number six, and I hope I'm counting right here, MIDI I.O. Do you need actual MIDI ports? Because usually you can solve this with either going with MIDI over USB or a dedicated USB MIDI interface. So it's not a major thing if the audio interface lacks it, but if you really want it, keep it in mind. Seven, portability. Do you need the audio interface to be portable? I mean, the 8 Pre is really not portable. And what kind of features do you need? This is where the original audio fuse shines because it works just as well in the studio as on the go. Maybe not something you'll pull up on a train maybe, but it works really well for a portable setup. You have basically everything you need. Uh, MIDI, you have the hands-on control, you even have a little USB hub, which I think is an underrated feature for an audio interface. But if you want to have it for the commute, maybe the audio fuse is too big, so you should look at something else. Number eight, outputs. In my experience, I rarely use more than two stereo outputs. And if you plan on running audio from your computer through a lot of outboard or having multiple pairs of studio monitors, then my outputs could be very important. But to be honest, otherwise, not so much. So that was my little quick guide to picking an audio interface. Leave your best suggestions down below on audio interfaces that have worked out for you and why, because I, I think it's great if you, we share this information because there's so much to choose from. So leave a comment about what's your favorite audio interface and why it works for you so people can actually get that information because I'm only representing my viewpoints. I bought the audio fuse a while back and I've been super happy with it. I can definitely stand by its quality, but there are so many other options out there. I bought the Claret 8 Pre a couple of years back and I've been super happy with that as well. I'm starting to realize I'm a little bit of an audio interface hoarder, but I kind of like to have multiple to test them and see what's what and test the sound quality and the feature sets also so I can be able to talk about it to you all. So I hope you enjoy that. If you enjoy my videos, uh, be sure to hit that thumbs up and subscribe. Enable that little bell so you get a notification whenever I upload. And I hope to see you in the next video. Thank you so much for being here. Have a great day.